Have I been wrong all along about putting lemon juice under your arms? We're gonna talk about it in today's video. Well, hey guys, welcome back. It's summertime, we're hot, we're sweaty. You know what that means, body odor. The medical term for body odor is bromhidrosis and it's caused by the breakdown of sweat by bacteria that live on your skin. Lemon juice is a popular home remedy for body odor. If you go online to various social media outlets, you're going to find accounts of people singing the praises for what lemon juice has done for their body odor. Now I have cautioned over the years against putting lemon juice on the skin for reasons I will explain later on in this video, but I will often point out, hey, there's also no evidence that putting lemon juice on your skin is an effective treatment for really anything. Imagine my surprise, however, when I recently came across a study done in 2020, actually, examining the efficacy of lemon juice for underarm odor. This was a prospective study, which is a type of study in which the researchers identify a group of subjects and they follow them for a defined period of time to basically see what happened. They identified patients with a diagnosis of underarm malodor. The diagnosis of underarm malodor was made when the patient and the dermatologist were made aware of the malodor. That's a little vague in my opinion. Who is not allowed in the study? Anyone under the age of 18, anyone with a lemon allergy, and anyone who had irritation or a wound on underarm skin, as you can imagine, would not be a great idea to go putting lemon juice on a wound or irritated skin. The participants were asked to rub a lemon slice of the Eureka lemon variety under their arms once a day in the morning. And the results were assessed by the patients themselves, not by the researchers. The patients were asked to rank their malodor on a scale from zero to 10 at the beginning prior to starting the lemon juice. And then again, 30 days after the intervention. Who all was enrolled in the study? They identified 56 patients with a diagnosis of underarm malodor. 20 of them were men and 36 of them were women. They ranged in ages from 18 to 86 years of age. Importantly, this study was done in the months of January through March of 2020. And the reason that's important is that, I don't know about you, but I tend to stink a lot more in the summer months. So something to keep in mind. Patients came from two private practices and one university hospital in Brussels. While they enrolled 56 patients, only 38 actually completed the study. So what happened to the other 18? Eight of them were lost to follow up, meaning they just never showed up. That happens in, st in studies. And the people who are lost to follow up, we never really know what became of them. We can only guess. Bueller, 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 Bueller. But six patients actually had to stop due to side effects from the lemon juice. And four patients just were like, eh, I don't wanna keep going with this, it's not for me, bye. But of the 38 subjects who actually completed the study, there was a statistically significant reported reduction in underarm malodor, down from 5.5 to 1.5. Side effects did develop relatively commonly. Side effects include itch, irritation, and eczema. These side effects resolved upon cessation of the lemon juice or with a mid-potency topical steroid cream. So this study suggests that that yes, lemon juice may help in reducing underarm body odor. How might it work? It might work by reducing the pH of the skin under the arms. Ultimately, that may have an effect on the types of bacteria that live there that would otherwise break down the sweat and lead to body odor. Or maybe it's just having that lemon fresh scent to deodorize the underarm area. So does this study prove that I am wrong and that we should all be using lemon juice under the arms? Well, there are a few limitations to the study before we can just go generalizing the results to everyone. It's prospective and it looks from zero to 30 days. It's hard to say for sure what else happened to these people in the span of that 30 day time period. For example, body odor can be influenced by changes in hormones around the menstrual cycle. So that may have explained some differences. It can be influenced by things that we're eating. It's hard to say again, what else may have happened during the 30 days of this study. It relies on the patient's subjective reports of body odor and therefore it's basically 
the patient's personal anecdote. There's also no control. There's not a group that gets something else. It's not blinded, which would be pretty difficult to do in all reality. How are you going to blind subjects to putting a lemon under their arms versus something else? I mean, that's pretty hard to do. Body odor is very subjective. Honestly, I've seen a lot of patients complaining of body odor and their family members will even be like, I, I don't smell any problem. Uh, so it's a very subjective issue. What stinks to somebody may actually be aromatically pleasing to someone else. <laughs> Believe it or not, they actually make a device that is an electronic nose. Uh, I, I didn't realize this. It's a great tool actually to use in, in studies like this because it's, it's something that can detect different compounds and quantify them. So you could actually you know, use this electronic device to objectively measure changes in odor causing compounds that are emitted from the skin. So that would be really cool to utilize in a study in the future. So Dr. Dre, why are you such a lemon juice hater then? Is it because you're paid by Big Pharma to hate lemon juice? Trust me, Big Pharma is not paying me a dime to talk about my issues with lemon juice on the skin. Why do I have reservations about lemon juice under the arms. Lemon juice can be pretty dang irritating to the skin wherever you are putting it. It's acidic, so it can be irritating. The underarm skin is a particularly vulnerable area for a few reasons. First of all, the skin there is delicate. Second of all, you have skin on skin contact. Uh, unless you walk around like this, you're gonna be trapping that lemon juice tightly up against the skin. There's gonna be friction rubbing it through the skin, which can increase the risk of irritation. And you have sweat, which enhances penetration of any irritating compounds from the lemon juice and just further drives more irritation. So it definitely can be super duper irritating. And for a lot of people, that irritation not only can cause a bad dermatitis, a bad rash, a flare of their eczema, as occurred in this study, uh, but it also can lead to hyperpigmentation, especially for people who have a deeper skin tone. Now, lemon juice is not only pursued as a home remedy for body odor, but a lot of people actually pursue it to lighten underarm skin, but it actually can end up having the opposite effect in the long run secondary to that irritation. So that is another reason why I'm not a fan of putting lemon juice on your skin. And last but certainly not least, it's something you need to be aware of when it comes to any citrus fruit, but lemon juice in particular, in this case is that citrus fruits contain compounds called furocoumarins. And when those furocoumarins are on your skin and you are that skin is exposed to sunlight, a bad, bad reaction can happen that can lead to a blistering rash that can be very miserable, very uncomfortable. And for people, especially with deeper skin tones, can heal with stubborn hyperpigmentation. It's nothing to mess around with. We often see this type of rash, especially in the summer months when people are outside, maybe making lemon or making lime margaritas, uh, but it certainly is something that you might want to consider in, in the case of using lemon juice under the arms. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, who's out there sunning their underarms? Presumably during this study period, you know, it sounds like it was in the winter months. I, I imagine people are wearing more long sleeves and protecting the skin in that regard. But in the summer months, when we're wearing tank tops, bathing suits, the skin around the underarm area is gonna see ultraviolet radiation and that lemon juice can be problematic in causing a phytophotodermatitis especially since in this study, they were having them apply it, apply it in the morning. Fresh lemon juice to the underarms first thing in the morning and then heading outside with a tank top, you could trigger a pretty bad rash. All right, so it can be irritating. So what, some people in the study had no problems with it. Doesn't that make it a great option? It, it Honestly, it, truthfully, it may end up being a more cost-effective option for some people. And while I point out that irritation is definitely something that you have to be careful of with lemon juice under the arms, let's think very critically about the things that we recommend for body odor. Antiperspirants, deodorants, these products can also be pretty irritating. And truthfully, there, there are no studies that compare the overall irritation and risk of contact dermatitis, eczema, dermatitis, with putting lemon juice under the arms versus any of these ingredients in commercial body odor products like antiperspirants and deodorants. What are some other approaches for controlling body odor? This may sound obvious, but don't rewear dirty clothes. A lot of people, you know, it can be tempting to rewear a shirt, not wash it, say, oh, 
wore this for a few hours, but that actually can contribute to body odor because you've got sweat trapped in the materials and then the bacteria in the materials further mixed with the sweat that you then produce when you rewear it. It really can actually build on body odor for sure. The other one may also sound very obvious to you, but it is just showering regularly. And I know what you're thinking, who doesn't shower regularly? But there are people out there who run into struggles in life that make showering regularly much more difficult for them. And so from a dermatologist perspective, seeing a patient with body odor, that's definitely something to address. Say for example, a patient is super duper depressed down they actually can lose the motivation for basic hygiene and failing to address that you're not going to get anywhere than the lemon juice unless you, you know, acknowledge the elephant in the room for that individual. Now, when it comes to body odor, one very useful approach is to aim to reduce the burden of bacteria that break down sweat. And to a certain extent the lemon juice may be doing that. But another approach, which I'm a huge fan of, is to actually use a benzoyl peroxide acne wash. I like to use Panoxyl myself. Uh, benzoyl peroxide helps reduce the overall burden of bacteria under the arm that would otherwise break down sweat. You can lather it to those areas while you're in the shower, let the lather sit on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. I know what you're thinking. Benzoyl peroxide is pretty irritating. Like, how is it any less irritating than lemon juice? You're possibly right. It depends on the percentage strength of benzoyl peroxide, 4% creamy wash is typically pretty well tolerated. But the nice thing about the wash in contrast to leaving lemon juice on your skin is that you're gonna lather it there and have a short contact approach where you then rinse it off. So it reduces the risk of irritation. But yes, you certainly can develop irritation from doing my favorite benzoyl peroxide wash approach. Then you have antiperspirants. Antiperspirants work because they contain metal salts, namely aluminum salts. Now, now, I know what you're thinking, isn't aluminum dangerous? No, check out my recent video all about the safety of aluminum. We go into it in detail there. I'll link that video down below for you. The aluminum metal salts polymerize in the alkaline environment of the sweat gland and they basically plug it up and that temporarily reduces the outflow of sweat. By reducing the outflow of sweat, there's less for the bacteria on your skin to break down and ultimately that helps in reducing body odor. Deodorants on the other hand work differently. A lot of people confuse use antiperspirant with, deod with deodorant. Deodorants work differently. Deodorants by and large work because they, well, in my opinion, they don't work particularly well, but most of them are essentially sticks of fragrance to mask body odor, uh, which the lemon juice may be doing that by just the lemon scent, masking body odor through other fragrance compounds. Another way in which deodorants can work, although the majority of them don't really work this way, is by reducing the amount of bacteria under the arms that break down sweat. So, you know, if you, you are doing the benzoyl peroxide approach, that is a deodorizing approach by reducing the bacteria. Whereas using an antiperspirant, that is a sweat reduction approach. You can use both a sweat reduction approach and a bacterial reduction approach for body odor. The two together is a really logical strategy, provided you tolerate these interventions because both antiperspirants and deodorants deodorants that you put under the arms, they can be super irritating. The metal salts, the aluminum salts for some people are very irritating because they, like lemon juice, are acidic. Uh, and the deodorants with the fragrance can be super duper irritating for people because the fragrance in deodorant is pretty strong. It's pretty concentrated. And again, like I said, the underarm area is a particularly vulnerable area for contact dermatitis. So it's not uncommon for people to develop a contact dermatitis to fragrance in deodorants. And whether or not it's any more problematic in a deodorant versus lemon juice, honestly, we really don't have good comparator studies to answer that. We, we don't have them. The other thing to do is to shave under the arms. Removing underarm hair can help actually quite a bit with body odor because hair is just an extension of your skin for more sweat and bacteria trapping to break down the sweat and lead to body odor. So removing the hair actually can help. Those are the things that you can do at home and you know various things that you can purchase over the counter. And depending on where you live, uh, some of these things just may not be accessible. I you know from, from hearing from a lot 
lot of you all that where you live, benzoyl peroxide wash is not something that you can buy over the counter. Then you have some treatment options that you can pursue professionally if these things don't work and you're really, really bothered. I mean, having brome hydrosis, it's, it can really impact your quality of life. So if these things have not made a dent in your underarm malodor, you may consider other approaches that a dermatologist can offer, namely Botox injections. Botox or neurotoxin, doesn't have to be Botox itself. There are other neurotoxins out there, but they actually can be very effective um, treatments for underarm excessive sweating. So if you have a excessive sweat, that sweat's gonna get broken down by the bacteria under the arms and lead to body odor. Um, Botox injections can really reduce the output of sweat and the results can last anywhere from four to six months. It's not permanent. You will have to get about two treatments a year. That may be cost prohibitive to you and are you know, uncomfortable. Uh, so it may not work out for you, but that's an option. The other option is uh, microwave therapy, Miradry. Microwave sounds like, what, popcorn? No, thank you. But Miradry is what it's commonly known as, or microwave therapy, basically um, applies thermal energy to the skin to heat up and destroy the sweat gland. You need two treatments three months apart, and it bills itself as a long-term solution, but truthfully, we don't have long-term studies on uh, mirror dry microwave treatment for permanent control of body odor. So in all likelihood, you, this is something that you need to repeat again. And so it, it's not a one and done kind of thing. You need at least two treatments and while the results can last, how long they last has yet to be determined. There are also some laser treatments that can be effective for targeting the sweat glands in people who make a lot of sweat. And the most aggressive form of treatment for underarm malodor is actually surgery to remove the sweat glands. That will result in, 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 a, in a permanent change and permanently reducing the sweat. But it's very involved and it has a higher risk of adverse events like skin infections, scarring. So that's, that's a lot more serious of an intervention but it has the lowest risk of recurrence of the malodor. For people who sweat excessively, there are also medications called anticholinergics that can decrease the output of sweat. On this channel, I have some videos, as a side note, on treatments for excessive sweating. So that, you know, if that's what you're dealing with and that's what's contributing to your body odor, check out those videos because I go into more detail about these different types of treatments, their side effects, how they work, and, and that sort of thing. So check those out. But yeah, I mean, there are, there are a lot of approaches to tackling body odor. I'm still not a fan of putting lemon juice under the arms uh, for reasons I've mentioned here, the side effect, effect profile, the risk of phytophotodermatitis. I really do worry that people with a deeper skin tone are going to end up leading, you know, causing hyperpigmentation that they're bothered by. I wouldn't call this study that I've reviewed here the most robust in terms of showing that lemon juice reduces body odor, but if you are someone who does the lemon juice thing and you find that it's effective, the study backs up your experience. But it also underscores my point that irritation is something you have to look out for. But you also have to worry about irritation with other typical body odor treatments. So nothing really new, I guess, in that regard. Let me know though, if you guys have seen the lemon juice hype, uh, if it's something that you have tried yourself uh, or is popular, maybe someone in your family recommends you do it. I hope this video was helpful and informative. On the end slide, I'm actually going to link a video all about myths around sweating. There are a lot of myths about sweat, and so that'll help you have a better understanding of sweat and body odor to bust some of those myths. Definitely check that video out next, but if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.